And joining us with more on the split of Rupert Murdoch's media empire is James Dick, Senior Equity Research Analyst at Wedbush Securities. James, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Michelle. What are the big advantages of the split, firstly for News Corp and now for the new company, 21 Century Fox? Uh, I think it allows the management as well as shareholders to focus on the different dynamics of the businesses. TV, film, and cable are quite different consumer experiences than newspapers and, uh, you know, news wires. And, you know, you're going to have two stocks starting Monday, which are going to trade to reflect those differences. Why the split? About a year ago when Murdoch initially announced it, it was right after that big scandal with the world of the news where there was wiretapping involved with that tabloid. Uh, Murdoch denied that it had anything to do with it. Do you think that's accurate? Well, I mean, uh, I, I guess it's, it's hard to know exactly what motivates it. Clearly, the newspaper business, you know, which is going to be within the news, a, you know, the new News Corp, uh, has all those legal issues. 21st Century Fox will, in, will, will provide some support to uh, the new News Corp for any, you know, charges or, um, you know, fines that might come out of that. But basically, it's, you know, this is going to allow the management of 21st Century Fox to focus on things other than the newspaper hacking scandal. But for the longest time, it was known that Rupert Murdoch loved the newspaper side of the business, and yeah. that having the media division, the entertainment division, afforded it somewhat of a protection status. So that's gone. What does that mean? Well, he'll be involved in both companies. So to that extent, he'll be able to pursue He's his passion. He's a CEO and of the one and chairman of the other, and right? And chairman of the other, correct. Um, so he, he maintains his involvement in the newspaper business, which is kind of where, where it all started for him. Um, but, you know, I, I, so I, I think, uh, you know, that allows him to, you know, put his vision on the newspaper business as it moves into a, you know, a, a different type of business model, potentially. Now, the newspaper, the publishing wing, had a $2.1 billion loss last financial year. And you mentioned the business model. What does it need to do to become profitable? Well, I mean, it probably needs to go beyond pure advertising, uh, which is one of the main sources for the print business to, to, to generate revenue. But Murdoch has been one of the big initiators of the pay-for-content model with the Wall Street Journal online. Is this a trend that we can expect to see him following, or the company rather following with other of its uh, Newspapers? I certainly think they want to have revenue streams, you know, other ways of making revenue other than selling, you know, ad time, ad space to advertisers. So I, I don't think there's any question that they're going to try to do more of that with the, with the print business. Subscription-based paid content online. Even commerce-based, uh, you know, other, other ways of monetizing other than selling eyeballs to advertisers. Yes. Now the print side, which also includes Harper's Publishing, it has now become, you've got the Wall Street Journal, the Times of London, a few tabloids in the UK and in Australia. It's now become one of the largest print companies and the largest print company in the US. What's the significance of that? Well, one of the things that's significant is that it will start trading along with other print companies. So mm -hmm. to the investors who are trying to figure out how much it should be worth, they're going to be able to look to other companies, New York Times, for example, that has large print operations in the U.S., and see, okay, does, it, does, it, does the valuation make sense for this business relative to other publicly traded print businesses? And I think that's one of the reasons you do this split, regardless of whether it's going to be a big or small company in the industry. Well, the traditional print businesses have actually had a great year of it with companies like uh, the New York Times and Washington Post and Gannett actually up 25% so far this year. So maybe there's hope for, uh, for the old hope News Corp. Hope springs eternal. Thank you so much, James Dix. All we'll right. have to leave it there. Thank you. That's James Dix, Senior Equity Research Analyst at Wedbush Securities.